Bonjour à tout le monde. Um, hello to everyone. Um, I could speak in French, but it's, it's going quicker in English, so let's, let's do it in English. Um, obviously, as Claude mentioned this morning, um, it's been a mess. Um, we also tried and hoped and said that's the bottom. So far, it hasn't been the bottom. But we feel there is, unlike a year ago, um, there is much more light at the end of the tunnel. And there is more and more evidence growing in the industry that the industry is turning. And now we have to wait for the gold price to, to turn. But don't forget, gold miners turn ahead of the, of the physical gold. So you might actually see a pretty interesting, very interesting from a performance point of view period while gold still struggles. But I'm coming to that later on. The disclaimer, as usual, we, we skipped that for timing reasons, but um, you have to read it, as you know. Um, this is the stuff uh, I'm going through today, outlook on gold and the miners and why this fund, and a, a quick summary at the end. Coming to gold, something p not many people are talking about is actually the, the real supply demand situation. You can see here to the left um, the the supply. The supply has been stable over the last few years despite recycling coming off because of the mine supply which was growing. However, now we see a peak in gold mine production. Um, this the last quarter, according to Goldfields Mineral Services, the mine production was down for the first time for a long time. So we see this peak coming and the reason is this, the miners stopped investing since 2012. And now the next five to seven years, we, see, we will see a pretty rapidly declining production. Recycling, also we hit new low again last quarter, so recycling is in a structural decline. So this, that, that's always good for a commodity if you consider gold as a commodity, but also for a currency. If you have less supply, that's always a positive thing. On the right hand side, the two key markets, China and India. What we see here is China gold deliveries are up over 35% versus last year and hitting new all-time high. There is a lot of talk about um, slowdown in China, etc. And there is also some discussion how the situation on the gold side is really in China. Reality is, for tax reason, every ounce in China, which is being used for fabrication, for jewelry, or for investment, except central bank, has to go once and only once through this China uh, to, to the Shanghai Gold Exchange. So we find it's the most reliable number on China and it's growing structurally since many years and it continues to grow despite a little bit of lower growth in China. India is recovering. India had some issues because of import restriction. They had a huge trade deficit because of oil and gold and given that they, use, uh, they need oil more than gold, the government uh, put in some pretty st uh, stiff um, import restriction. That's all over now, and with $40 oil and even 50 or 60, that won't be a problem for India either. So India is recovering to normal state. These two markets make over 50% over of the total gold market. Now, obviously, what was missing in the last few years is investment demand in the Western world, in Europe, in, in the US, and this was the big problem for gold. This is why gold um, collapsed in the last few years. The key drivers of gold, according to the general public, is uh, the dollar, the real rates, and the Fed fund cycle. Um, obviously, the dollar was strong um, in the last few years. It might get a little bit stronger, possible. But don't forget, the dollar is a weak currency in the long term. Why is that? Very easy. Um, it's not interest rates. It's not inflation which is relevant for currency in the long run, it's a trade surplus, respective trade deficit. The US has, despite oil boom, despite talks about reindustrialization of the US, still a trailing trade deficit of over 700 billion per year. So the US will stay structurally a deficit country and this will lead structurally to a weak dollar. Obviously, if you have capital flights like in the last two years, that can overshoot these kind of things. But don't forget, if you look today, it's a very, very crowded trade. Every bank recommends it. Everyone recommends it. There is a pretty big speculative position against the euro in favor of the dollar at the COMEX. 
not far away from where usually the market turns. So we expect next year actually a trend change in dollar which should help gold. Real rates coming down to 0.3. Obviously, real rates were going up in the last few years, and for us, it, this is the key driver for gold, even more important than the dollar. Obviously, it was because inflation came back. However, now, with $40 oil, the whole oil industry will go bankrupt in the next five years. So the downside on the commodity side is very small from, from our point of view. So, but thanks to the base effect, this deflation pressure will disappear. Also currency related, we had some inflation and still have disinflation from, from emerging market currencies. As I said, that might go on for a few more weeks, a few more months, but we are reaching a level where these currencies are getting really cheap. So the deflation should disappear from the system and because long-term rates will not go up in a big way, unless there is a government crisis coming, which is not something um, we would exclude. Um, but otherwise, the U.S. Econ economy is not growing as it should and as it's being marketed. It's a joke. Since two years, we are talking about recovery, huge recovery in the U.S. It's not happening. The reason it's not happening is, is um, structurally, it's too much debt. It is, uh, the, the U.S. economy is also um, like Europe, a problem is demographic. And then obviously the strong dollar doesn't help at all. So the U.S. economy will not grow next year more than it does this year. So there is no reason for long-term yields to go up, except we get a government crisis. And that could be the next big one for gold. There are some guys in the market, um, Martin Armstrong, um, I, I mentioned the name because it's not based on our research. He is pretty confident based on his cycle models that we are turning now to a loss of confidence in government. According to his models, it started early October this year, and because of that, according to him, we should see long-term rates going up. But not because of inflation, not because of economic growth, just because people will realize that they will not get the money back from government bonds. This sounds a bit extreme, but if you look at the situation, Greece is just the start. There is no chance Europe can pay back the government uh, bonds. And the International Monetary Fund, uh, Monetary IMF, is actually preparing the market for that. It is preparing rules where a state who can't get money in the market can automatically on its own extend his government bonds by 20, 30 years. And you as a bondholder, we just get a, so a, a new bond, which instead of getting the money tomorrow, you might get it 20 years later. So we are talking at that. It's the IMF, it's not us. It's a serious institution. Be aware of that. That could be the reason why long-term rates go up, but not economic growth, and probably also not inflation. Now, we looked at something which um, we find just amazing. Every bank, every broker tells you don't touch gold. Gold is dead. Now, there is a, Ned Davis is probably one of the most respected independent research house with the best database among research houses, much better than any broker. Actually did some work since 1926 and looked at it, when does the addition of gold to a balanced portfolio make most sense? I, when do you improve the return risk characteristics of a balanced portfolio by adding a few percentages of gold? And they came with a very easy conclusion. There are three environments where you, where you should add gold to a portfolio. Number one is you should add gold to portfolio when the US stock market is expensive. Now, there are lots of talks, and I had these talks 15 years ago when I was writing a big bear market in 2000 uh, about a pretty ugly period for stocks. And everyone said, but this time it's different, um, interest rates are low, and whatever they, they told me, uh, private equity will buy all the market, etc., etc. Et 
Reality is based on Schiller P normalized earning. The US stock market is trading at the 75% premium to its long-term average. This is since 1890. Okay, it might be different this time. And I probably agree that given the long-term rates and the deflationary situation we have, maybe the stock market should be a bit more expensive than it used to be over the last 125 years, but it is really expensive. Now, number two, and this is a big surprise, gold does very well when the Fed is in a hiking cycle. Unlike all this bullshit talk from brokers and banks, we have 90 year evidence that this is the best period of gold. And to be honest, I don't know what the brokers are drinking because gold was going up in the three last hiking cycles. The only really moment it, it proved right to be negative on gold when the Fed was hiking rates was when Falker, end of 70s, really killed the economy to kill inflation. Now, we all know that the Fed, the central banks, because the states have too much debt, don't really want to kill the economy these days. They actually want inflation, but they don't want higher rates. They want to continue with financial repression. And there are much more smarter guys than I am in the US academic persons which wrote books and looked over two, 300 years back. How long do periods of financial repression, i.e. negative real rates, last on average. And the average is 27 years. It's very clear, it can't be over in three, four, five years because you don't get rid of the problem. We have a much worse debt situation today than what we had in 2007, 2008. So we need a lot more financial repression so the Fed will not jump ahead of the inflation curve, what Volcker did end of the 70s, but it will stay behind the curve. And this is the only reason why gold does so well in, in a Fed hiking cycle, because the Fed is in 90% of the time, it's behind the curve. Now, why will they raise the rates in a few weeks? Because they lost credibility. And they hope by increasing the rates by 25 basis points in December that they regain the lost credibility. But what will come with the statement in December? The Fed has been cornered by the market in the last two years and lost credibility. They will not play the same game. So they will be very clear, 2016, rates will only be raised if there is a clear improvement in inflation rate and a massive or significant improvement in economic growth. Both which according to our leading indicators model will not happen. So number three when you should have gold in your portfolio is when the long term rates go up. It's also a surprise, but reality is now looking at these three environments, we have an expensive stock market we feel the Fed will hike, the, will hike rates and most people expect higher long-term rates. So we have the perfect storm, the perfect environment for gold based on 90-year history. And this is not data mining, I tell you. And every bank tells you zero allocation to gold. This is how great our research teams are at the banks and the, and the brokers because the problem is that none of them has more than 20 years backtesting and most of them have actually don't even really backtest in a, in a sensible way. So we have the perfect environment for gold and it will play out again. The summary on gold, as I said, the supply will decline structurally in the next five to 10 years. The demand is rising thanks to rising incomes per capita in China, India and other emerging markets. The government and the central banks have no interest to generate positive real rates. The debt problems are unresolved and getting worse. And competitive currency devaluations will be positive for gold. Actually, a new game has started because China doesn't accept that um, the dollar gets much stronger. So while the currency devaluation of the euro and the yen over the last 12 months 
were agreed at Jackson Hole in 2014, the step by the Chinese this year to devaluate their currency was not. So actually we are in a new step on a currency war. Now what will change next year? Because many of the things I said just right now, you could have, I could have told you last year. Now, however, what we see at the selling pressure from ETF is over. We currently also have one of the lowest COMEX long position, which in the last three years was the best trading indicator. So every time this position is as low as it is today, you have to buy. And we have the train change in the key performance drivers of gold, like dollar, real rates, and the real, as I said, the Fed fund expectations for 2016 will actually most likely decline after the December meeting. And we have improvements in India and China, the two key markets. Moving to gold stocks. Gold stocks are pretty crazy, as you know. Um, it's not always fun being a gold uh, fund manager, but um, they generate lots of volatility and lots of chances. Now what we see here is the golden line, and what you clearly see is the first part of the cycle, the gold miners massively outperform the physical gold. Afterwards, when costs are coming up, these are the blue bars here, it's not the time to have gold miners anymore relative to physical. But we are now entering, or we are actually in this period where there is cost deflation, and as soon as gold stabilizes, gold stocks will explode. Also because the, base, the gold miners are price takers, and obviously given that Rio Tinto seemingly just said this morning that they expect another five tough years, and you can be sure the base metals who actually are really making the price inflation or made the price inflation in the gold mining industry in the last um, 10 years, they will not spend, which is very positive for the gold mining industry. The other reason for the cost increases were great, but great have now been stabilized after they halved in the last 10 years. Now, valuation. I'm in tendency evaluation guy, a contrarian guy, and what we see here is, is dramatic. I mean, on a price cash flow basis, we are much cheaper than the stock market, very unusual for gold stocks, the cheapest level ever. Price book, we are at half book value, the lowest ever, and half the valuation we had when this cycle started in 2001. Now the industry is turning and as I said there is light at the end of the tunnel and this is a proof that it is happening actually. I mean we have been so frustrated over years about the execution of the gold mining companies, the producers, which disappointed and disappointed and generated negative free cash flow over and over again even at 1600 gold they achieved negative uh, free cash flow, but this is changing now. As can be seen here, a, a year ago, we had a gold price of 1282, and these key producers, <coughs> sources BMO, um, made still s some negative free cash flow, minor 39 million only. A year later, this quarter, we are down at 1125. The industry makes over 860 million free cash flow. So actually, the, despite gold being down over $150, the industry is recovering fast and generating for the first time for many years relatively significant fresh free cash flow. Obviously, the question is what will be Q4? That, that was the average price a few weeks ago. It's now a bit lower. It's still above that, but it might actually still fall below the, the Q3. But free cash flow, given what we see so far, is likely to increase in Q4 again, despite even if the gold price would fall a little bit further. So a very positive sign which we haven't seen for years. As I said, gold miners are crazy, uh, crazy investments and very often frustrating, especially in days like today or in the last few years. This is 75, 76 year history on gold mines indices. Barron's gold mines, then we used XAU, and since we have UE, we, 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 we used the Amex Gold Packs Index. Now, this is the top of the cycle, that's number of days since the, since the peak, and you see here, the sector, unbelievable, seven times in 75 years, was able to lose between 67 to 84%. Pretty bad. 
much, much worse than the energy sector. I don't know why, because the energy sector every time oil falls, oil stocks fall less. With the gold miners, it's always the other way around. But the good thing is when the cycle turns, it's also the other way around. So minus 84% is the last cycle, which is exactly the level we reached between 96 and 2000. And it's also the second longest cycle. We all don't know when this cycle ends, but it could have been in August this year. Now, once you reach that bottom, it becomes interesting because then returns of three, four hundred percent in three to five years or even more, like what followed the 96 is the yellow line and that just had an intermediate correction here and then went, went much, much higher. We stopped it here, otherwise you couldn't see the other, the other lines. Um, actually, it's really, when you reach the bottom, you have to own gold miners. No other asset can do as well, as well as they do once you reach the bottom. We feel we have reached the bottom, maybe are wrong, maybe the bottom will be reached in the next few weeks or two, three months, but we think we are very close. And then you will have a lot of fun. Now the cycles. I was actually coming to the office about three months ago, completely frustrated. Um, talked to the founder and he said, oh, she is just going through the same crisis I went 15 years ago. I said, ah, oh, good, good to know. Anyway, we, we, we look back, how was the cycle, how was the environment in 2000? Everyone was talking about a strong dollar, 170. Uh, expectation was 253 Swiss francs. We had declining liquidity in the US. We had the Fed was hiking rates at that time. Very similar. We had an active restructuring in, in the industry. We had an Im improvement with declining costs and rising free cash flow as we have today. We had record low valuation. Even today, we are just 50% of what we had then. And we had very smart money coming in, like we see today, while the not so smart money is finally selling out after minus 80%. The charts are so similar, we were shocked. And you see here, there was a presumed bottom in gold miners, as here. And then when the stock market started to become a bit jittery, like here, gold stocks had its final decline. But what followed here was 340% in one and a half years. While gold was actually making the low, it's very normal, so four months later, and then only was going up 20% in the same period. So it's really this kind of period which we think it's now. You have to be in the gold miners and not in physical. More evidence that the, the, the trend is changing. A year ago, I could have brought you up here two names or three names which did not make new lows. Now this year, the gold mining index makes a new low by over 30% versus last year, and already over 10% what we consider investable stocks in the industry are not making new lows. That's the best indication of a trend change coming. Be aware, in 2011, it was the other way around. And on the stock market, general stock market, we have a similar situation today. Stock market goes up, but more and more negative divergence. Here we have positive divergence in the sector. The mining cycle itself, it's relatively easy. Uh, you follow what the companies do and you know where you are in the cycle. Um, it won't be on the day, it won't be on the quarter, but like this you should do actually very well as an investor. Unlike mo oh, sorry. most investors come in here, get interested here in the boom phases, but obviously you should buy here like the smart money is doing. Our fund very quickly, we are the most aggressive um, old cap gold mining fund in the industry. This is unfortunately not the whole cycle because um, unlike gold 2000, which is only for qualified investors, which I can't show here, um, but still in the, in, the, in the first cycle, we made 1,400%, GDX made 500, BlackRock around 1,100. In bull markets, we do a lot better than our competition. In, in bear markets, we do a little bit worse than our competition. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. In kind of ratios, we tend to do about 1.6 times. I mean, gold 2000 did 2.7 times, but at that, part, at that time, I must admit, many gold stocks were hedged, so we, ne we never invested in hedge companies. 
Um, but we tend to do about 1.6 times benchmark and 1.4 times competition. In bull markets, about 1.05 times during the big bear markets. So it's, it is an interesting product. If you want to know more about it, I'm still here for the next two hours. And summary, given that we are running out of time, I leave that, uh, I think I, I said most of the things. Um, it's the time to buy because nobody else wants to buy. And this is very easy. Thank you very much. Thank you.